G'day, Reese down here. Welcome to episode 58 of the Selection Bullet Points podcast. And this episode is about time and priorities, and specifically about how much time you should put into different areas of selection preparation. And the reason I bring this up is because I'm often asked how much time does one need to put into the different areas of selection? I, how much time should I put into learning my knots and hitches? How much time should I put into navigation? How much time should I put into unit history? Now, all, all these things are the different skill sets you want to be on top of when you're preparing for selection. All right, things like obviously your fitness, weapons, navigation, first aid, heights, roping, your cognitive skills, your behavioral skills or soft skills, such as emotional intelligence, things like stress management and the like. And my answer to that is I don't really have an answer. It's hard for me to tell people exactly how much time they need to put in to certain areas because everyone is going to have strengths and weaknesses. So really the answer is it depends on what you and your situation specifically needs. For example, a guy coming from an infantry background is going to spend less time on weapons than a dude that's going from the Navy to do selection. Okay, so somebody from the Navy is going to need more time and need to prioritize more time on the areas that they're not so good at or they've never trained before, such as, such as maybe the use of a minimi. Right? Or, or navigation components if they'd never done that. Somebody in infantry who's all over weapons and maybe navigation and retail or using the radio, maybe they need to spend more time on their behavioral skills and stress management and working from heights. Okay? So it really depends on your situation, what your skills are now, what your weaknesses are, and how much time you've put into these previous. Um, activities depending on what your job role is depending on what you've done when you've when you've grown up as a kid and the other thing you want to do is think about how much time I need to put into these areas that I'm not so good at or I know you know that I'm lacking or I haven't touched for quite a period of time so if you want to break it down if you look at fitness for example you're going to spend a lot of time working on your fitness but if you break it down, it might be only one to one and a half hours per day on average. Yes, you're going to do longer pack marches as you're leading to selection, but probably only an hour a day. If you do too much above that, if you're doing two, three, four hours a day, you're just going to break yourself. Okay, if you're thinking about maybe your cognitive skills and, and brain training games, whether you believe that works or not, you know, you're not going to spend hours every day on brain on, on you know luminosity or these different brain training apps. All right, you might decide that you're going to do spend 15 minutes of it a couple of times a week. That might be enough. Okay, roping on how to how to tie basic knots, that is not going to take you very long to learn and then it's just about maintaining it. So what you really need to do is work out the skills that you're weak at and then prioritize those skill sets and what you need to work on and prioritize them in order, but also in time, how much time do I actually need to spend on these areas? And then that's going to give you a clearer picture of how your selection prep is going to go and just break it down. And then the closer you get to selection, the more you're going to narrow your focus. Because the longer you're out from selection, you can have other things in your life going on, all right? You're going to have, you might have plenty of different, I guess, distractions or different activities that you want to do if you're quite a lot, if you're a number of years out from selection. Okay, but the closer you get to selection, the more you need to narrow that, that focus because if you've got too many things going on, you're not going to prioritize the right things. For example, if you're right now working on or you decide that you want to get really good at kickboxing or jiu-jitsu or boxing or you want to become uh, a triathlon uh, athlete and improve your time over an Ironman triathlon distance for example or you want to complete one that's fine if you're a long way out from selection but the closer you get to selection you have to drop a number of and get just get rid of a number of those other distractions and activities and really focus on selection because selection is all encompassing all right and it, it is it's going to change your life if you can get through it so 
really that 12 months leading into selection, that's what you want to focus on, okay? And again, these priorities and commitments, that will depend on your specific situation. If you're, got, if you're single, for example, you can just spend all your time training for selection and getting that balance right outside of that, still hanging out with your mates and having a good time and get, allowing yourself to recuperate and relax so you're not going to be burnt out. But if you're married and you've got kids, that's going to be different, okay? Your selection prep is going to, going to be different and you need to prioritize or sit down and think about what you're going to be able to focus on and what you want to focus on. And there might be th- some things that you're just not going to have a lot of time to prep and again, that's going to be your decision and that's going to be based on your skill sets. Okay, so you sit down, depending on how long you're out from selection, sit down and look at all the things you need to or you decide that you need to prep on based on your situation and your experiences and your life situation and start prioritizing those, those things and those activities and Start thinking about how much time you actually need to put in those to get those skill sets to where they need to be and then to be able to maintain it so you get a really good 8 to 12 months leading to selection. All right, because that, like I said, that is going to change your life. You have selection is a massive focus. It needs to be so you're turning up as the best possible candidate and giving yourself the best chance of getting through. You don't want to get punted off selection and think oh fuck i could have done that i could put more time into that i knew that but i didn't do it you know i didn't prioritize it or i got too distracted you know i'm trying to focus on a degree at the same time or whatever the case may be okay so narrow your focus the closer you get to selection have everything in order prioritize them understand how much time you need to put into it um, so you're giving yourself the best chance if you need any help or if you want me to expand on any of those make sure you hit me up you can do so via email, Reese, which is R-H-Y-S, Reese at OperatorAge.com or check out OperatorAge.com slash selection, number of resources and free resources there. All right, hope you got something out of this episode. I'll see you in the next one. Thanks.